Well, we've been making a whole ton of automated farms and things lately on this survival world, and I have to say I'm pretty pleased with the progress, but I feel like I kind of skipped over something and missed something out, and that is an automatic furnace, because we really do need a bit of a super smelter, a fast system that we can use to smelt items up very quickly whenever we need it, because let's face it, you do quite a lot of that in Minecraft. Uh, so what I've done is I've laid out a bit of an area here, and today's video is going to be kind of two parts. So the first part, we're going to build an auto smelter, and I'm going to show you guys how you can set that up in your worlds. The second part, we're going to actually decorate it and that's what these things here are for so we have some actual uh, furnace looking things or like metal forge looking things up on top of this hill here um, and I think that'd be quite nice because this hill does then tail off pretty quickly down here so when you're coming from this direction you'll see these furnaces with the smoke and they'll also be near our storage I think it makes sense to build your super smelter uh, super smelter I should say uh, near your storage because obviously that's where you're gonna get your stuff to smelt um, so what I'm gonna do if we just head around here I did some preparation work earlier and here we go. So, I've dug out a big area here underneath these things. Uh, now, I want to know where they are, which is why I've dug it to this level, so I can see uh, where they are to line things up. But essentially, this is where our super smelter is going to be built. Um, so let's start looking at how we're actually going to build that thing, and uh, I'll go through it block by block with you guys. So when I'm making a system like this, what I like to do is start with my output, because uh, I want to know when all is said and done, where do I want my things to be got from? Now, I'm going to come on to exactly how we're going to do this later, but I'm essentially going to hide the output in the furnaces uh, that you see here. So this is going to be the third one. So essentially, there's going to be uh, an input here, for our fuel source and input for our items that we're going to smelt and then the output so that's why we have the three uh, so our output is going to want to be somewhere around here and I actually know that it's going to be uh, the chests are going to go here so there's going to be one there one there that's going to be the double chest for the output um, now eventually we need to get it to there but I might uh, sort of if we come down here like this i might put the output along here for now and then we'll figure out how we're going to get items up there later because i do want to build the super smelter first uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, turn these uh, sounds way down a second because there's a bit of water in the background which i think might be affecting the video uh, okay so uh with the output here this is where it's going to go uh we're going to place a chest here like this and chest here like that now once we have our output we want to grab a load of hoppers and we're going to run hoppers going into this. And uh, essentially, we're going to need uh, 18 of these hoppers. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, no, oops, torch in the way, <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Now, what I want to mention at this stage, I'm going to place furnaces on top of all these, just like this. This system works also with uh, blast furnaces and smokers. So, if you wanted to use it specifically for one of those, you could absolutely do that. Um, also, uh, I've been asked in the past, because uh, I did do a tutorial specifically on this, and actually I'll, I'll link that down in the description. Uh, people said, you know, can you make this longer and shorter? Yes, you absolutely can. Uh, that's that's not a problem. Um, so I just want to get rid of some of these torches to give myself a bit of space to work with here. But we better uh, place them back down so we don't get any mobs <laughs> spawning in here or anything like that. Uh, so once you've got these furnaces in place, the next thing to do is actually place hoppers all along the front here like this so that they're facing into the furnaces. Now, as you're already seeing pretty quickly, this is quite a hopper intensive design. There's no two ways about that. Having said that, it is a super smelter and it is uh, obviously kind of not meant to be easy to make, right? <laughs> and uh, this will work very, very quickly uh, once it's all set up. Just uh, falling off there. So uh, th there's pros and cons to this design, just like any other. The other thing you're going to need a lot of in this design is powered rail. So I'm going to get my uh, redstone box here. And in here, I do have a ton of powered rail. There we go. Uh, so we're going to need a lot of this running along here. So essentially, we're going to use hopper mine carts to put both the fuel and also uh, the, uh, the things that we want to smelt, the resources that we're going to smelt, into this system. So we're going to get all these along here like this. Um, and uh, sometimes you might have a problem with them connecting up, like if I place one up there, uh, so you can see it's not connecting up, but sometimes people have had problems with that apparently. Uh, so uh, you just want to kind of complete each system first if you if you find you have that. And uh, when I come on to the next bit, you'll see how you can sort of connect up each line of rail before you move on to the next uh, with uh, where it's going to end up essentially. Okay, so with the rail in place along the top here, uh, what I want to do is just place a block there like that and one there like that. So when the hopper minecart comes along here, it doesn't fall off and it bounces back along that way. Okay, uh, so uh, with that in place, uh, we're going to need a little bit of extra space along here. Now, uh, you guys can see uh, I've got haste 2 at the moment. I did set my beacon, uh, beacon I should say, up for this. Uh, it seemed like a good thing to do. <laughs> uh, so let's just make a little bit of space here, and then we'll put the, uh, the inputs and outputs in place. Uh, oh, actually, I'm using my fortune uh, shovel. I thought that was a little bit slow. 
We've got uh, a normal one here. It's a little bit quicker. There we go. Okay, so uh, coming off the edge of here, uh, we need to now get uh, a bit of a system set up where the uh, hopper minecarts are going to pick up the fuel and the items to then deposit into the furnaces. Okay, so I've gone ahead and uh, put down a load of this yellow terracotta. Uh, when I'm building with redstone, I do like to use a block that stands out so that if I'm ever doing anything in the future and I'm mining underneath this, I know not to destroy it because <laughs> uh, I've lost a few good projects that way. Um, so, uh, okay, so when you're doing the, the rails here now, what we need to do is uh, place one normal rail there and a powered rail there and then do the same here and here like this. And then we need a block here at the end of each of these so that the uh, the hopper minecart will go against it and bounce back. So they're going to just constantly travel up and down between these. Okay, uh, so then we just want a temporary block here and a single chest in there like that. Very good, we can get rid of that block right now. Um, and that there is going to be uh, obviously going along here, going into the front of the furnace. Um, so that is going to be essentially our fuel source. Uh, and then up here we need uh, a double chest. Uh, and that's going to be what we're going to smelt. So it works quite nicely uh, because you're going to always have more things that you smelt uh, than you are things that, you, uh, that you're that you smelting. Wait, things that you're using for fuel, I mean. <laughs> that's what I meant. Okay, good. Uh, so that's kind of how you do the, the front bit here. Um, but then there's a little bit of redstone to do around the back. But it's really not too bad. Let me just grab my redstone chest here, head around the back, and uh, we'll have a look at how you do this. Alrighty, so for the redstone component of this, what we want to do is get in line with this hopper right here and uh, place a comparator facing in this direction on top of a block there, just like that. Then we want to place a redstone torch on top of that block and another block above that redstone torch and a second redstone torch here like this, so closer to the end where the chests are. Uh, now, if you've done that correctly, this torch will currently be off. Then you want to place a block here, a block here, and a block there, so three blocks in total. We're going to have a repeater here going into this block, and we're going to have some redstone dust there, just like that. Um, so, if I just uh, come back here a little bit, I'll show you guys this is what it's going to look like. So this is the area here, like this, going into the chest there. You can see all of that. Uh, and then down here, it's going to look like this. So you guys, if you're copying along at home, uh, hopefully that explains it all for you. Of course, as always, guys, if there's any questions, then do let me know. So now we're ready to just about finish up uh, back around at the front of this machine. And uh, what you want to do is grab yourself a couple of hopper minecarts. There we go. One there, one there. And uh, we place one on there just like that. And grab the second one, if I click in the right place, and place that one down there like that. Okay, very good. Uh, so now this here is going to be the things you want to have smelted. So I've just grabbed myself a load of cobble. You can see how quickly it gets pulled out of there. And it's all going to go, of course, into this minecart here. Uh, and this here is going to be our fuel. So we use coal for that. It sort of makes sense. There we go. And that's all going down into there. Uh, so what I want to do now is just grab myself a button because there is a couple of little bits left to do. So we just want to place a button here like this and a redstone dust here like that. Um, and now you're pretty much ready to go uh, in terms of the smelter being set up. What you need is, okay, all the coal's in there. Looks like all of that's in there. If we flick this button right here, there we go. Off they go. And you'll see here, you can kind of see the furnaces there. They are lighting up, uh, and off they go. Now, uh, one thing we haven't done yet uh, is lit up the rail. <laughs> so, uh, or power the rail, I should say. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. I think my redstone box is here. Yeah. Uh, so all you need is two blocks of redstone. So uh, basically what you're going to do is come to the halfway point. So uh, let's grab some stone here. So we can come and have a look at this uh, and place two blocks down. Uh, so let me just have a look at exactly where this needs to go. Okay, so we should be able to figure this out together, actually. If we count here uh, from the first one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and number eight up there. If we shift and place a redstone block. Come on, why, why, why are you not going? Let's shift and place it on top of there. There we go, that's going to light up. Uh, uh, most of that system and then if we shift and place that there that should do the rest however I think we're probably gonna have yeah this problem right here uh, where basically this is not all uh, lit up all right that stuff's gonna end up in my output chest uh, probably hang on there we go <laughs> I think is that all of it did some of it end up here yeah okay all right I think uh, we, we've got all this all right so uh, what I want to do actually is uh, just grab this stuff back out because I, I messed this up when I didn't let it fully, uh, you know, I didn't have it in the right order. Okay, so uh, now if we replace down our powered rail here, that's going to work very good. Uh, and this one here, now that's been updated, should also work. So basically, it's just a case of needing to update them. Uh, sometimes you'll find that once the rails have been placed uh, a bit too early, like I did. All right, so let's put that in again, make up two hopper minecarts. 
and we'll try this once more. So let's put those in there. Let's put all of the stuff that's going to be smelted going in there. Very good. Uh, now, did all the coal end up in this bottom furnace? So the good thing is we can go around the back here if we need to grab anything out. So yeah, that probably should only be about one. Um, so yeah, actually probably... Did it get stuck in here as well? No. Okay. Well, for now, you guys will get the principle. <laughs> um, obviously, once this is set up, I'll uh, have it done better in the future. But with all that in there, with all that in there, this time when we push this button, both of the carts go off and they'll go along there. And then they should come back. Uh, huh. Okay. This is really strange. I'm not sure why they're not coming back. Because this is definitely powered. Well, guys, that was embarrassing. Um, <laughs> I had uh, accidentally placed down activator rail here uh, instead of powered rail. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working because I know the system works. Uh, after all, uh, I've used it a lot of times before. Uh, so, yeah, now this should hopefully work. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, no more problems and we can see this working in all its glory. So let me just place the rest of these rail down here uh, and then yeah, we should be good. So I'd place powered rail down here, but uh, not on the other two for some reason. Okay, so let's get this hopper mine cart back in here. Let's make our next one up there. Place that in there, just like that. So all of this is now powered and it is powered rail. That's good. Let's put, uh, let's look all the coal's been used. Uh, let's put the other items in here and actually we just as well put them directly in there. You guys have seen now that it does work, that it uh, all goes in there. That wasn't the problem. Human error was the problem. <laughs> now if we push this button, all right, they're going to go off and they're going to come back. And when they come back, they stop. So... Let's have a look. Should that be stopping? So the mistake I made uh, here, guys, with the uh, redstone is quite simple. This shouldn't be a button. It should be a lever. So that's permanently on. Okay. <laughs> so now they should just go up and back. Yeah. All right. They're good. They're, good. they're going up and back. They're filling up the, uh, the smeltery with all the stuff. And very quickly should be uh, entering items over here. So we can see, yeah, a lot of, a lot of items are coming through here. Yeah, pretty quick. So it's, it's a automatic and it's very fast. Uh, I just built it slightly wrong. There is a much better tutorial on how to build this that I made uh, down in the video description and comments. So uh, do check that out if you if you want to see how this is made in uh, a bit more efficient than how I've done here today. <laughs> um, but that is only the first part of the video, of course. As I mentioned, uh, what we're actually going to do now is uh, let's get rid of all this yellow stuff. But then we're going to head back up and we're going to make a bit of a smell tree. I'll show you guys how that's going to look. But uh, I've been playing around with the design in my creative world and I have to say I'm pretty happy with how the designs turned out so we'll go have a look at that and I'll show you how we're going to kind of hide all the chests and stuff and also make the smeltery. So guys I have built one of the furnace sort of structures right here and this is what it looks like. Uh, so I think it looks kind of cool, uh, certainly the smoke going high up in the air and stuff I think that looks nice and if we go just sort of over this way a little bit and you picture when there's three of them here I think that'll look cool. Uh, what I'm also going to do is swap out all of this grass and we're going to have some bricks and stone bricks and that sort of thing. Uh, we'll have some lava effects as well so all up when this place is done i think it's going to look really cool but what i thought i'd do is just uh, show you this smoker right here uh, and go through how i build it uh, on camera with you guys in case you want to build this um, or also you might just be interested in some of the things that i've done here uh, in terms of like this right here it's almost looks like slabs uh, that are facing uh, vertically instead of horizontally, right? And, uh, you know, just go through some of the build sort of tips and tricks uh, for this design. Uh, so what we're going to do is just clear our inventory uh, here a little bit. We might need that one. Uh, and grab out the materials that we need. So it's actually all built out of stone brick, uh, with the exception of a couple of iron bars. Oh, and one thing I forgot to show you guys as well that's uh, kind of important is when we're looking in here like this, if we look so our crossbar is just above this step and we right click, boom, we've got a chest. Uh, so what's going to happen is this one right here is going to be the input and this will be the input for the resources we want to smelt uh, or possibly fuel. It could be either and this one will be the other. So if that's the resources we want to smelt, this one will be the fuel and this one will be the output. So what that means is for our auto smelter, we're actually able to hide the entire thing underground and all you'll see is these things. So it actually looks like a smelter and I actually think that's pretty cool because uh, normally uh, what you see is the redstone structure that you saw below with all the rails and stuff whereas this this looks a little bit prettier and by the time i'm done here hopefully it will look a whole lot prettier so i'm going to show you how to build the entire thing from scratch so if we go over to this uh, area right here basically what this takes up is a five by five square so that's the space that you'll need if you want to build one of these um 
And that is for design like this. Obviously, if you want to amend it, then uh, you can do your own thing, and that's cool. Uh, what we want to do is come diagonally in one from the corner and get rid of this block here and this block here. Uh, and that's where our chests are going to go. Uh, now, what I'll do, actually, is just jump down here a second, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, I think I can hear zombies. I think there's, a, there's caves underneath here. That's what's happening. So, essentially, you can see that this chest here is going to have to get to either that chest there, so I'll put hoppers or some other way of getting the items there, um, or it's going to have to get to this chest right here. Uh, so hoppers going along here and down into that chest probably will be the way to do it. So uh, whichever one that goes to, this chest here will have to go to the other one, right? So one of them will be the fuel, one will be the items to be smelted. Now, in the video tutorial in the description and comments where I show you a full tutorial on how to build the uh, smelter system you see here, my output chest was actually here. It was on uh, these couple of blocks here, I believe. Uh, now, I changed it on this one, and I've put the output down this way. Um, a, to show you guys that you can actually have the output chest on the opposite end if you want, but B, it's going to suit us because that chest right there is where these items need to get up to. Now, again, I will go through how we're going to shoot the items up from this chest into this chest a bit later on. Um, it might be a little bit tricky, but I think we'll uh, we'll be okay. Might need to just uh, tweak some things with it, but either way, it's going to be it's going to be good. <laughs> All right, we'll figure that out, and uh, I'll show you guys that. Uh, so with that in mind, we're now going to go and build our second furnace together on camera. And uh, again, so that you guys can you know copy that if, if that's something you want to do. Uh, now it's turning night time. So what I'm going to do is do a quick little cut here, make it daytime because I cannot build this before it turns to nighttime. And uh, I don't want monsters and stuff spawning in the area while I'm building here. Alrighty, so to build one of these smelters or furnaces, whatever you want to think of them as, um, first thing you want to do is place your chest down here, just because it's easier to do it at this stage than it is later on. Then if we come to the front, we want one stair face down like this, and then place one like this here, and one like that just there. We now need a couple of temporary blocks here, so that we can place the stair upside down just like that on these blocks, get rid of them, and do the same on the other side. Uh, apart from, you need to place it in the correct place. <laughs> That's always important when you're building. There we go. So that goes there just like that. Very good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is come up on top here and place stairs like this. We want one there, one there, and one there. And now, if I get rid of this and we take a step back, you'll see that right there is exactly the same as this right here. So that is the front bit done. And that's kind of the bit that's the different bit, right? The front bit's a little bit different. The sides are all actually the same, so it makes it easier. So then you just want to go one, two, three there. Miss out this corner. One, two, three. Miss out the corner. One, two, three. All around the outside, nice and easy. And we're going to follow that up by placing steps like this, steps like this, and again, steps like that. So obviously, the lava is going to end up inside here. Incidentally, lava, of course, does not burn chests. And that's why when our crosshair is just above the step right there, you can access this chest as we did over there just a second ago. So that's how that all works. Alrighty, so uh, now we need to kind of jump up here. So that block was a temporary block. We can get rid of that one. And what we're going to do is we want to place ourselves a stair here like this. So this will create a corner with a... Oh no, I fell down. <laughs> uh, with a solid block here and a stair here, just like that. Very good. Then we'll place a solid block here and a stair facing that way with a solid block and a stair. Plot. we want to put the stair like that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so then you want to go one, two, one, two. Uh, we need to get this one in here, one, two, and three, and one, two. Then we can jump and place a stair here, 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 and here. So this creates the sort of chimney structure you guys are seeing there. Now, at this point, what you want to do is grab a hay bale and some campfire. Now, for those of you who don't know, a hay bale makes the fire and the campfire go a little bit higher. Um, so that's why the smoke's going up really high, which, seeing as we're building a smelter and the whole point of it is to be kind of fiery and smoky, figured that was probably a good idea. So we want the campfire to go not on this block, but on this block. So therefore, we want the hay bale to go on that block campfire to go there so there's essentially a one gap the reason for that is just to hide any fire and so all you see is a smoke coming out the chimney so if we fly it down here and get rid of this block we're then gonna have a little step back here and you'll see it looks like this so that is almost it the only thing that we want to do now uh do i have any grass in here i do okay very good so we want to um, let's put that in our off hand so we can do this very quickly just get rid of that block there for grass that one there this one here 
And this is going to change later on for whatever floor you want, but just so we're doing it the same as that one. And then I put iron blocks here. Now, uh, obviously, uh, anything with this build is optional. You can customize it however you want. But I thought the iron blocks there looked pretty good, um, the iron uh, fence gates, just to give it something a little bit different. And it will look like that. So I think when we have the three of them here, it's going to look pretty cool. Now, just to say, you could build this out of other materials. I tried one out of cobble, uh, but the stone just looked a little bit better. You could also build one out of bricks, uh, you know, the red bricks. But I'm going to use a lot of bricks in the flooring of this design, and I thought it would look a little bit clashy if we put bricks there. Um, so I think this is going to look pretty good. The only thing I'm sort of toying with is where we want to integrate some uh, cracked stone bricks into this. So in a second, I'm going to come back once I've got all the lava that we need, and I'll show you guys how to put the lava in here, although it is pretty straightforward. And we're also going to try swapping out some of the stone bricks for crack stone bricks where we can and we'll see how that looks okay so getting the lava into one of these things uh, you have a few options really if you want it to look like i've done here then you'll need nine buckets of lava but you can actually do it with just one to actually cover it so uh, if we look at uh, if we just get rid of this for a second and put a stair there so we can replace this quickly if you were to place one in the dead middle so uh, if that's chest block just here like this we can box that in the lava will spread and cover this entire area and you'll have a flowing lava pool just like this uh, now, obviously, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is all personal preference. But uh, I quite like the steel lava pool that we have on that one. So what we want to do at this stage is place a block uh, of lava on each of the others. So we can place a block on the back uh, back left, I suppose. Uh, back middle and back right, just like that. Uh, and then we've got a few more here that we need to place in. And actually, I think from memory, there is one in here as well. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I knew I had another one somewhere. Uh, so we can place a block there like that. One there. We can place one there. Oh, okay. All right, for a second I thought it was a creeper. Uh, let me just get rid of this dude. Hopefully I get some chainmail armor as well. Always like to see a mob in chain, because obviously uh, it's very difficult to get. Yes, we did. We got some chain... Uh, let's see, chainmail leggings with unbreaking and fire protection. Not so worried about the enchants. Actually, with chainmail, I prefer not having enchants. Uh, but never mind. That's all right. Uh, and now we want to place one in there. So basically, uh, just because uh, I know I fought a zombie in the middle of that, but basically uh, after placing the middle one, we did the back three, we did this two here on the left, these two here on the right, and now we have one bucket left. So for this bucket, this final one, you can get rid of the stair here, just like this, and place it there, just like that. Uh, so that essentially covers uh, all our bases. So now if we go look from the front again, uh, you'll see here the lava is still like it is in mine. Now when I say still, it does of course still have the particles and things if your particle effects are on. Uh, so the little sort of lava bits will shoot up like that. I think that looks pretty cool. And there's our, our smoke firing out of there. So that's looking pretty good as well. Okay, cool. Happy with that. Uh, so the next thing for me to do is place the third and final one in here, which I'll do off cam. Just wanted to do one to show you exactly how you can build it if you want to. Uh, and then once that's done, um, we're not far off being complete actually. We just need to put the floor work in. Instantly, one thing I didn't show, but again, if we stand here, we look just above this with our crosshair and we right click, we'll open our chest. So uh, not too difficult to find where it is uh, hidden under the lava there. And uh, yeah, quite a nice effect, I think. Obviously, as well, having the lava here will provide a little bit of light, but we're going to need to light up the area, which I'll come on to once I've done the flooring and uh, got the third furnace in place. Um, one thing to say, though, that is kind of cool about this design is there's no blocks on the structure that any mobs can spawn on because all of these blocks are stairs or half slabs. Um, actually, I think they're all stairs even, but uh, either way, basically no mobs can actually spawn on this structure. So that's a good thing about it. You don't have to worry about lighting the structure itself. You just want to make sure you light the area around it if you're trying to stop mobs spawning. So let me go ahead and build the third one and uh, get started on the floor, and then we'll come and have a little update uh, as we go along. All right, guys, so uh, I've made a few little changes here, and uh, we're actually seeing it at night time right now, which is kind of cool. You can see I've got the lanterns on top of the cobblestone walls there. I think that looks quite nice to light the area up and uh, prevent mobs from spawning immediately around here. Uh, we will need to do something about the wider area, though, as we go on. But yeah, so it's all in place. Um, I've also put in some of these uh, cracked stone bricks throughout the design. I actually think it's looking much better right now. Where's my sword gone? <laughs> my inventory is so full right now. Um, yeah, so as you can see, we get a lot of mobs spawning here. And it's getting worse and worse as I light more and more of the caves up. So I need to sort that out. Yeah, the cracked stone bricks, definitely think they're an improvement. I think they're looking a lot better. Uh, oh, I just saw I've missed some uh, iron bars here. I have to put those in. Uh, as for the flooring, we've gone for just bricks and granite. We have the odd granite stair and the odd brick stair. If I can find one, uh, I don't know. There's a few around. <laughs> they are here. There we go. There's one. Um, just to give it a bit of uh, texture and stuff. I actually kind of like the granite with the bricks, uh, but let me know what you think, guys. Um, I think this might be 
controversial. I think some people might hate this, <laughs> and I can kind of understand that. So let me know, and if it gets a lot of uh, negative comments, maybe we'll change it out and do something a little bit different. But for now, we'll leave it like that. Uh, so the next thing to do, let's actually let's clear a little bit of space here, just because uh, I'm really running low on this, aren't I? Yeah, there we go. We can get all this stuff out of the way. There we go. And we'll just take down some of these blocks and some hoppers. Because what we're looking at next, there's a zombie here somewhere, isn't there? There he is. Let's see if we can outrun him. Is to connect up these chests to the chests underneath so that they actually connect up uh, to the uh, smelter system itself. So, as I said, we've got to get this one here to this one here. Uh, this one here to the next one over there. Those aren't going to be too bad. It just requires a fair few hoppers. Not the end of the world. The difficult one is going to be this one here, which we need to get up to there. Now, it is the shortest distance, <laughs> and it's basically in line, but shooting the drops up to there, we're going to have to look at how we want to do that. Um, but I do have an idea that I think is going to work, so we'll test that out in a second. Let's have a look at these, though. So uh, I think what we're going to do is start with this one. Now, what I am sort of slightly um, concerned about is just making sure that whenever we place a hopper here, going into this one, but it's not going to connect up. It looks like it's going to be high enough not to connect up with any of that, so that's very good. So actually, this should be fairly simple. We'll run it down here like this, and eventually, obviously, we want to run it into there. So we'll put that one. Is that in line yet? We need to go one more one there. Okay, that's good. Now we just need to build up here like this um, so that we can make sure it goes in the right place. Uh, and put that one down there. Okay, very good. So uh, that one is going to be for our resources. So uh, things we want to get smelted up are going to go in here and end up in there. Not too bad. Uh, as I say, it is intense with hoppers, but I've got an iron farm, so it's not too bad. Uh, now, the next thing is to get this one connected up to over there. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. We have to have a little run around here. Again, I just want to try and make sure it's not going to uh, connect up with any of the redstone here or anything like that, because obviously redstone, uh, powder redstone will lock hoppers and things like that, so we just don't want it to interfere. So let's uh, take a little walk up here and have a look at this. So we're going to need to place a hopper. You know what, I might have to just kind of restart these later because I'm going to get in their way, aren't I? Yeah, so we're getting your way, getting your way as well. <laughs> and we can just start you up again later. Uh, and then we're going to need to just, I guess, come past this. Now, if I run that like that, not that one there. Um, yep, yeah, alright, I'm going to knock that out of the way again. That should be alright. I don't think this should interfere with these hoppers, right? Because it's, no, there is a gap. Okay, good, good, good. Um, it's pretty sure, but it's always good to check. Uh, then we can run out this way like this. There we go. Uh, and go on like this. Yeah, that's going to be good. All right, so we can come from here. And we need to get it in line with that one there. I say this is taking up a lot of hoppers, but we should be good. All right, is that in line yet? One more. And then run it down this way. I'll get rid of that one in a second. Just running it along the top here like this. And in a minute, we'll do a test run to make sure this is all working. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be good. Final thing to do, where that one go? <laughs> Over there, is uh, just to jump up here, place that final hopper on top, and it's going to go in. So, obviously, this is unnecessary, um, but I think it will look quite cool um, as a system to actually be able to do it the way we're doing it. So, that it's all hidden by these uh, furnaces that's going on here, and this is our auto smelter system. So, uh, as part of this series, I do want to sometimes combine redstone systems with something that looks kind of nice or at least looks a little bit different and hopefully that does achieve it uh, with what we've built here today um, I certainly like it myself so hopefully you guys do too um, so what i'm gonna do now is have a little sleep have a little think a little play around with the redstone for the final chest and then when i come back i'll show you guys how we're going to do it so that the output gets put into the chest we want it to go into so whilst i was editing the episode i realized that uh, i made a slight mistake in that this minecart right here when it goes by, it could actually take things out of these hoppers. Uh, now, it might be kind of unlikely, but if it's a possibility, then I do kind of need to fix it. <laughs> so, it's pretty simple to fix. We're just going to grab some hoppers and go up here. Uh, this is obviously um, because of the elaborateness of connecting up with these chests. Uh, so, it's not a problem you'd have if you were building this at home, really. Uh, it's only for, for what I'm doing. So, essentially, what we need to do is make sure that one's not there. And instead, we're going to need to not fall down and kind of move all of them one higher. So, basically... If we place, uh, we might need to lose this block for right now. Just grab that out of there so I remember it. And place this here so we can come up like this. And place this like this. And then I'm going to do all of these hoppers going along like this into that one right there, uh, which is connecting up to the chest. So I just thought I'd mention that uh, just in case for whatever reason you are building this exact thing or uh, 
you know, no doubt someone would have noticed this. <laughs> so there we go, guys. I have now fixed this little issue. Alrighty, so uh, what I've done, I've just moved this chest over here a little bit. It was in the wrong place. It was actually up here for some reason. Uh, now, the other chests are sort of this block and this block, uh, but... <laughs> um, but for us, it's going to work out a little bit better if we do it this way around. I'll show you why in just a sec. Let's place that back. So there's going to be lava up there eventually. I've just moved it out of the way while we build this. So as you can see uh, up here, we've got a dropper going into the chest. Um, so basically, if that gets powered when there's an item in, it will just put the item directly into the chest. So I think this is going to be our best way of doing it is to get the items out of this chest here like this and then into droppers facing upwards that are going to go into this one here. So if we stand directly there, Let's grab a few of those out. Let's get rid of this block here. Face that one up. We're essentially going to need to get a line of uh, droppers going up that way. And um, from uh, the input point of view, we can just use hoppers like this to run them in. Let's place that one there. Uh, if we get rid of this block right here, we can... Wait. Sorry. I just... Uh, I, my heart sank then. I went really quiet <laughs> because I know there's loads of mobs down there. And I was really focusing on just not dying. I need to light the cave up under there. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Obviously, now anything that gets into here... Uh, will automatically go directly into this dropper down in here. Very good. Uh, what I need to do is just clear a little area out around this. Jeez, look at it. You can see how bad it is down there. It's crazy. Let's block that off. <laughs> we don't want any, uh, any shenanigans with mobs going on for a minute. Uh, and then we're going to build this tower upwards. So if I build up like this, and we can grab the droppers, and I'm just thinking what I'll do actually is just turn these mob sounds off for a minute. Um, and also, let's try and get that in the right place, shall we? Yep, there we go. That one there, that one there couple of these and see if we can get this going all the way up one there one there and we need one final one this might be a bit tricky um, let's get rid of that block there and that one there for a second so we can build up here hopefully there's no mobs up here about to blow up <laughs> um, yeah all right so we're good um, so let's just come back down this way and uh, put these blocks back in place there we go all right so we've got all the uh, droppers in place facing upwards so uh, now we just need to have some sort of system for powering them um, so the way we're going to do this, let's have a little look. Uh, just give myself a little bit more space here. That should be fine. And uh, grab some redstone components. We need a comparator here. So basically, when there's an item in here, which there is right now, you see it was powered. If there's nothing in there, it won't be powered. Uh, and then the good thing about that is it will then only be powered when there's items in there. So the rest of the time, the system will be off. Uh, then we want a redstone torch there like that. And we're going to hook it up to a hopper clock. So... Uh, See, if we grab a hopper here, face that one into it, get rid of the original one, and then place a hopper facing in like that. Now, the whole point of this is basically uh, when there's an item in there, that then becomes free. So if we put an item in here, you'll see it's going back and forth between the two. So this hopper clock is now technically on, and if I put a comparator down there, you better see that. So it's turning on and off pretty quickly. Uh, if we take an item out of here, you'll see that this now turns on, locking the hopper and locking the item in place there so basically that then goes off okay very good so that's gonna be the way that we're gonna have the on off system automatic so it will know if there's any items in here they immediately go in there and turn the system on and shoot the item upwards so that's good uh, okay so now the next thing this is sort of the tricky bit is powering this slot so what we're gonna need to do is have a block there like that a redstone torch and a block on top and then a redstone torch and do this the whole way up so let's go up here like this and uh, see if we can get this done. Let's put these closer together in our inventory or we might be here all day. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is essentially the principle. So you guys would have seen this before, no doubt, that uh, the redstone signal elevators. So this is the way we're going to do this. Okay, and then we need one final one there and there. Okay, so that's good. That's going to send the signal upwards. And now to make sure it's powering the... the uh... Now hang on a second, that's going to... Hmm, I might need to... Let's, let's just see how this goes. So one, two, and three, like that. All right, so if we put an item in here now, uh, that's gone uh, over to there, I guess. Yeah, it's got locked. Okay, so let's just test this a second. Uh, now, let's see. Is there anything currently in the chest up there? Uh, yes, there is. Right, let's take that block out. Actually, that's good. So red terracotta goes in. Does it get shot up or does it get stuck? I think that might have worked. Let's just go have a look. No. Okay. Um, so where did it get stuck? So did it go... Well, hang on a second. Oh, it's got stuck at the top one. Oh, that's interesting. Um, now, why has it got stuck on that top one? 
All right, I was looking at this for a little while. I tried a few different things, and I think I've now fixed it. So what we've done is uh, basically we were missing one redstone torch. So just by getting rid of that block there, placing the redstone torch, I think it was as simple as that. So here's our input, um, or our output, I suppose, from the system. Let's see if it now goes up. Yes, it does. Very good. All right, so now what we'll do is if we grab, uh, let's say, eight blocks here like this, you can kind of see it in uh, working order. So basically when it's on, all these redstone torches are flashing and alternating, which is powering all of these. Um, and uh, and this system will then shut itself off when it runs out of blocks. And then when we look in here, we should now have eight blocks. Yep, there we go. And that one right there. So pretty cool system, to be honest. Um, you know, it's pretty compact. And one of the cool things is it's silent. You guys may have noticed. Uh, I'm not on silent. I do have all my Minecraft uh, sounds on, just to prove it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, uh, there's nothing being shown. Uh, no sound coming out of the system. So it's actually really nice for that. Uh, so basically, if we go back up top here now, and it's been nighttime for a while, so it could be a bit busy with mobs, but hopefully not. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be okay. So basically, we look down here like this. We can open up and put in our resources that we want to get smelted up. We're looking like this. We can put in our fuel. And then finally, when all's said and done, we can look in like this and grab our stuff out. And obviously, I'm going to fill this with lava like I have with the others. But that is essentially how it's going to work. So, yeah, I think that is pretty much it, guys. That's that's the system in place. Let's just head back over here so we can sleep because it's turned night time. But, yeah, i got to say, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool as well. So there we have it guys, we have an automated smelter system now and uh, I'm super happy that we do because I know I'm going to need it for a lot of things like when I do big projects and need lots of glass and that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, and I'm pretty happy with the outcome as well, I like the look of this thing and uh, it's a cool little area to add to our island as well and obviously the fact that it's all automated is always nice. So uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. If you guys liked today's episode, please do consider liking and subscribing, it really is greatly appreciated. But for this episode, that's about it for today. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.